let me introduce Mark Donnelly, and he's going to be covering what's new in NX7. And luckily for us, NX7 is already out, so all of this stuff, right, is pertinent, right, Mark? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thanks, Jay. So, sure. uh, let me get the presentation. There you go. Start it up for you. Okay, great. All right. Well. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, I guess, to some. Uh, what I'm talking about today is uh, the NX Natrium 7 release. Uh, Natrium 7 was released uh, in end of third quarter last year, maybe more at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Um, and what I'll be talking about this afternoon are enhancements we, we made in that release. Uh, we are coming out right now, uh, within a week or two, a maintenance pack for that Nastran 7 release. So it'll be Nastran 7 Maintenance Pack 1. And what we're doing is we're fixing a couple bugs that were identified in, uh, in that 7 release. One has to do with a shell stress correction. Uh, we were getting, uh, you could get wrong corner stress results on CQOT 4 in, in certain conditions. This was a result of a performance improvement that was made that, you know, we got faster uh, uh, results recovery, uh, but we had that one problem. Now, you could, without the maintenance pack, you could use this Nastran system cell equals one, and it will use the old algorithm and will give the correct result, or, you know, download the maintenance pack, which should be available in about a week. There's also a CFAS correction where uh, it has some projection algorithms that could cause uh, fatal errors. Uh, for the future, Nastran 7.1 is coming out in July of this year, and we are in the process of uh, doing the beta testing on that now, and, and I'll give a plug for uh, any, anyone who's interested in uh, uh, testing version 7.1 you can contact us and we will show you how to get, uh, download the beta version and you can do some testing, uh, some new functionality that's coming out 7.1. Hey, Mark, just to make it easy for everybody, at the end I'll have my contact information, but uh, it is jay.clark at siemens.com. Anybody interested in the beta program, go ahead and send me an email and I'll get you in touch with the right people here. Okay. Thanks, Jack. Uh, then, 4.7, you know, the, the areas that we concentrate typically for Nastran is performance, process improvements, and discipline extensions, and we have new capability in all those areas. Uh, for performance, uh, one of the things we've done is improve the uh, performance of the RD modes functionality. This is the uh, DMP, Parallel Processing uh, Distributed Mode, uh, for eigenvalue calculation. Uh, is this RD modes capability where we're now able to scale to a uh, much higher uh, number of processors than we have uh, in, in the past. Here's an example here with an automotive model where we scaled out to 64 CPUs and we were still getting a performance increase. Here we were getting a 30, 30 times performance speed up compared to one CPU. Uh, we believe we can go out to 128 maybe even 250, and still get a performance improvement. Now, the RD modes is uh, using what's called automated substructuring, so it's uh, doing automated uh, super element analysis, in essence. So there is some level of approximation, but we've done validations to show that it gets very accurate results, and, and this image here is showing that when we compare it to an exact Lanzos, we get almost identical response prediction. So still is a very accurate, although somewhat approximate uh, uh, algorithm for eigenvalue calculation. But the good point is it's very, very fast, especially in parallel process mode. Uh, another way of looking at scaling in, turn, in addition to the number of processors is, well, how does it scale if you ask for more number of modes? So here is an example where we use the 64 CPUs, uh, but we asked for more modes. 
And if we look uh, for when we solve for modes in the 0 to 100 hertz range and we normalize to that, then we, then we start solving for a wider uh, mode range. How much longer does it take and how many more modes do we calculate? And you can see when we go out to 500 hertz, we calculate almost 11 times as many more modes as 0 to 100 hertz, but it only took 50% longer. So it's another great way of scaling uh, for, for uh, computing more modes. Very little penalty. Uh, for performance, uh, we also worked on uh, linear contact improvements. Uh, the big improvement here was um, in 6.1, we, we started introducing automated penalty factor computation. Before that, we just had a hard-coded uh, factor in, which a user could override. But now what we're doing is we're calculating it uh, based on model uh, parameters. And when we do this, we can calculate an optimal penalty factor to, to use. And in version 7 here, we have this on by default. We're automatically doing it. Uh, and what this does is you can get linear contact convergence in more iterate or in, in less iterate less iterations if you have an optimal um, penalty factor uh, uh, you're using. And this automated calculation is giving that. And you can see that we're getting in some cases, you know, five times uh, performance improvement in runtime. Uh, similarly, what we've exposed um, uh, linear contact with the iterative solver. The iterative solver is the fast solver for uh, use when you have solid mesh models, like tet mesh models. Uh, before uh, version 7, uh, this was kind of a, um, a prototype implementation we had. For version 7, we've got a full implementation. And again, for these types of models where you're doing contact on solid mesh type models, you can get very good performance uh, compared to using contact with a sparse uh, th with the sparse algorithm. Again, here's an example where it was about five times faster using the iterative algorithm. Uh, also for uh, version 7, we've improved the, uh, the algorithm for contact and glue to give much better accuracy uh, for the contact pressures and, and stresses in the, in the glue area. And this goes back to the uh, improvement we did in version 5 where we added this refinement capability to, to give improved accuracy. Uh, that worked great, uh, but in some cases, depending on the, 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 the matches that were in contact, the refinement algorithm uh, did, didn't, uh, didn't always work, and we had to fall back to a, a no-refined uh, type calculation, which is still it's still good, it just doesn't have as good resolution for things like the pressure. What we've done for version 7 is we introduced a more robust refinement algorithm. And now virtually all meshes that, that we're uh, having come into contact, we, we, we get a good refinement, we never get a refinement failure. And so we can get much, much better resolution of uh, contact stresses. Uh, also for version 7, we enhanced uh, contact and glue by now allowing uh, users to define uh, parameters, contact parameters, glue parameters locally for, for uh, different, different pairs of contact and glue. Before, we just could have global parameters that apply to uh, contact and glue everywhere in the model. In some cases, you want to